Hello. Uh, here we come to the uh, unit of this uh, this class, where we uh, start by discussing clouds and then start discussing some general issues of the data deluge. Here was a slide we ended with last time, which was the last effectively data application, big data application, which was discussing uh, the Internet of Things. And the fact that the those things will be controlled by uh, the cloud and uh, sensors and things are, are a pretty similar general concept. So now we're coming to clouds. And clouds, as we discussed, are very important as they um, are the back end that uh, naturally controls uh, both the things which we just discussed and all the processing of big data. Uh, this slide is from Microsoft Dennis Gannon and shows some of their data centers across the world, which um, Dennis points out that they have 100 data centers, Microsoft, across the world, varying in size from uh, small ones to large ones, which are in the size range of 100,000 to a million servers. And that uh, both the global distribution and particular examples are shown here. I've pointed out um, uh, already that uh, when you go to the internet, you can find lots of information. But to decide what that inf how reliable that information is and get exactly the right answer is not, often not so easy. And things like the sizes of cloud data centers is viewed as proprietary and there is not so easy to find reliable information about that, and uh, so here we just here we ju just take these slides from Dennis Gannon and uh, take them as a, we have we, we I don't actually have independent confirmation that there are data centers with a million servers. So. One particular picture here, which is shown in expanded, is that of the fourth generation uh, data center. And um, we will discuss those in uh, just a tiny bit more detail as it illustrates some of the issues of uh, clouds. So clouds are not, ju are of course, important here because they are the natural processing places of big data. They're sort of natural because big data was first uh, highlighted by those uh, what you might call the Web 2.0 uh, or internet um, applications such as search and social networking and e-commerce. And clouds were developed first to process this data. And then uh, starting with Amazon, it was realized that these facilities which had been built to uh, process this enormous amount of internet data and internet uh, transactions could be used more broadly. And that, uh, that sort of introduced the concept of public clouds and the fact that clouds can be used generally. And now it's, almost, now it's sort of become a technology for data centers. So clouds have revolutionized the technology for data centers because they have introduced much larger data centers. And so in going to much larger scale, they've looked at the issues of efficiency and optimization that have not had such a strong focus in the past. This slide also is from Dennis Gannon, um, and <clears throat> it makes a tr sort of simple, simple point that, uh, but a critical point that uh, the reason why clouds are clouds, and uh, is that. Um, there are economies of scale by putting all the computers together. So the essential idea behind the cloud is that the internet allows us to access computers wherever they are. So we could do what was the grid, which is to say, mm. so what we'll do is we'll take computers, scatter, scatter them across the globe, and then use the internet to integrate them together, and then we get some giant uh, computer. So that's one actually relatively important view. But clouds are a little different. They say we can also take individual locations and put huge numbers of computers at that one location and then get an economy of scale in running that location. 
that location, both as economy of scale from um, the fact that it is, you don't need, um, you can save on just the number of people required to manage the system. If you have a million computers in one place, uh, probably does not need 10 times as many people to run it as if you have 100,000. You can also be uh, careful to place these clouds in uh, locations where the cost of energy is low and maybe it's uh, particularly environmentally friendly. So if we look at the um, bottom uh, uh, right of this uh, slide, then it points out that these cloud centers are pretty big, some 10 or factor of 10 or more bigger than a football field. And then if we look at the bottom left, it has a uh, table which points out the, how the cost of a large data center compares to the cost of a small data center, showing there's some factor of uh, five to seven, in, in depending on what you're looking at. Um, so note that uh, this points out some important issue that uh, often when you think about buying a computer, you just look at the cost of the hardware. So that's the upfront cost. But if you're actually running a cloud, you're looking at both the cost of the computer and the cost of running the computer. So clouds don't particularly change the cost of the computers, although if you buy them in huge volume, you can presumably get a better price. Uh, but more importantly, they affect the, uh, um, the actual lifetime cost of running the system, the, the power, the um, and things like, and the actual people and things like that. So uh, here's a here's just a picture of a Google facility uh, on the Columbia River, and it points out that these centers use quite a lot of power. Maybe the big cloud centers use from 20 megawatts. That's uh, hundreds of thousands of um, of um, servers to 200 megawatts, which is Certainly, what you might you might need numbers like that for million, million or millions of servers. Um, so here, this uh, slide here is a some, somewhat old slide up front with a quote from Microsoft, a press release about the Chicago facility, and it points out that one of the technologies used is a modular technology, which is actually expanded in the fourth generation data center, which says that uh, you build um, data centers, not with the unit being the rack, but the unit being a shipping container. And uh, you just buy your computers in shipping containing units. Those are shipping containers are transported to your data center. Uh, they're unloaded there, plugged in and then you just get more computers. And so this particular Chicago facility has somewhere, it says here, from 150 to 220 shipping containers. And uh, that picture here, these little rectangles are in fact, uh, or cuboids are in fact um, shipping containers used in this particular um, facility. Um, related to this, I've already pointed out environmental issues. Um, so we can do two things. We can um, both position the, the uh, cloud in a, in a um, place that uh, has environmentally friendly and cheap energy, but we can also uh, design it in a way that is uh, extremely efficient. And some measure of efficiency is the so-called PUE, which is the total power used in the facility divided by the power needed to run the computers. And if you look at what that is historically, it was actually pretty large. This number of PUE was around three. Now the average is meant to be 1.8 as people have become more efficient. But clouds can get that down, the best clouds can get that number down to 1.1 to 1.2. So just, this is what I pointed out. Clouds are revolutionizing data center technology. And one of their revolutions is to make the, make those data centers just much cheaper, significantly cheaper to run by just being more efficient about the use of power. And um, another important issue is just the modularity. Hmm. 
So in the fourth generation data centers, which uh, was shown on the previous uh, previous but one slide, uh, the they are basically making everything modular. So that uh, and there's a I give a link here to show in more detail, not just the container based third. Everything is modular, so that when you want to expand it. You just bring, you just make everything, all the network interconnects, everything is just modular. So you just can uh, build your, upgrade your cloud center in a very simple fashion, which is linear in the number of computers you want. You don't invest uh, a large amount of money in a data center, make it empty for a long time, and then expand it. At some time, Microsoft has um, pointed out that. Um, one important feature of clouds as a computing paradigm is that clouds are so large, they focus a lot on reliability. Because if you have a lot of computers at any one time, one of them is going to be broken. 